It feels like every hive that I've ever lost, I've lost in the month of February. Maybe some of them I've lost in March, but every winter, February is a very crucial month for beekeepers. And there's a reason why that most bees die in the month of February. Number one, it's usually due to low populations. So it's not that your bees are getting less and less populated now, because that's a natural occurrence in the wintertime. Bees just die naturally of old age all winter long. It's more of a problem that your bees really didn't have a large population in the fall. Because in the fall, and if you've watched my videos at all, you realize I teach a lot about fall bees that you see you know, in September, October, even in November. They're the bees that are left over from bees of summer physiology. That means they're bees that don't live long in the summer. They're summer bees. They die within 45 days. So the only thing you really can count on making, making it through winter are bees of winter physiology. So if your populations are low in the fall, then a lot of times what little winter bees of physiology, winter physiology that you have, coupled with a few summer bees and somewhere in between, they make it till February. Hey everybody, David Burns, good to be with you today. I'm an EAS certified master beekeeper and I'm here to talk everything about bees and beekeeping with you. And today the subject is, why do bees die in February? And should you be concerned about your bees dying in February? And what can you do about it now, right? Let's talk about it. Well, so low population is one of the reasons that bees perish. A lot of people don't realize that bees have no way of staying warm except by a lot of bees producing a lot of heat. <laughs> I mean, that just boils down to that. You're not going to keep your house warm unless you have a big heater in the wintertime. The more heat you have, uh, heat producing items in your house, your furnaces or electric heaters or something like that, a, a, a heating blanket on your bed, you're going to stay warmer. The less heating items that you have in your house, you're going to have a very cold house. And the bees are the same way. Now they don't heat their house, but they keep each other warm and they need a lot of bees. This winter has really been hard on our bees. We've had just a, a really long run of extremely cold weather. So population, bees are the only heaters in your hive. People think you can insulate your hive and save the day. Sure, I, I, I wouldn't argue that I know that helps. Insulation has got to help. But on the other hand, Think with me on this. This is, I get pumped and excited about this. The only heater that your bees have are bees, right? You can insulate your house all you want to, but if you don't have a furnace, your house is gonna get eventually as cold as it is outdoors. Am I right? I mean, okay, maybe 10 degrees warmer inside. Like if it's zero degrees outside and you walk into a shelter that's not heated, yeah, maybe it's going to be 10 degrees instead of zero degrees, but it's still going to be cold, right? So population is everything. The second reason that bees die in the month of February is because they simply run out of food. They eat, believe it or not, bees eat a lot of food to stay warm. They do. They have to consume food to produce heat because they're using their muscles to make that heat. And if you've ever worked out, you know you have to eat more. Usually you have to eat a lot more carbohydrates and you have to eat a lot more protein to rebuild your muscles. So you're eating a lot of food to work out, to strengthen yourself. And bees are the same way. They're going to eat a lot of food to be able to produce heat from the muscles that they're moving. And so if they're low on resources, low on population, they're a goner in the month of February. Another reason bees die in the month of February is because the viruses in the hive that were transmitted, that were passed around by the varroa destructor mite that maybe you didn't keep a good eye on, or maybe you did, but in the fall you didn't have a chance to keep them down and they just kept growing and multiplying, then those mites are spreading viruses. And here's a deal too that a lot of people don't talk about. I rarely hear this on YouTube. Why doesn't somebody talk more about this? Why is this not being examined, talked about? Why, why aren't there just papers, research after research papers done on this subject? And here it is. Even if you kill 
all the mites in your hive, they were transferring, transmitting viruses before you killed all your mites. Those viruses don't go away because the mites went away. They don't. Future viruses may not be there because the mites are gone, but all the viruses that those mites that you killed, all those mites uh, are dead, but all the viruses that they transmitted around, those viruses are multiplying rapidly. So even though you can get rid of mites, doesn't mean that you can get rid of the viruses that are in the bees that are being, the viruses get fed uh, to the larvae from bees that are infected. The queen could be infected. The eggs that she's laying could be infected. The drones that mate with virgin queens can be affected with viruses. It just goes on and on and on about the number of viruses just exploding in the hive all through the season. It's just crazy. Here's another subject that we don't really talk a lot about. We like to say the opposite, but I'm, I'm, maybe I'm even changing my um, opinion about this. Um, but let's face it, winter, just winter alone kills bees. Am I right? I mean, come on. Let's be honest. The bees are able to endure a certain amount of cold weather. They Sure, they can produce a certain amount of heat. They can produce a certain amount of brood, even though it may be a smaller amount of brood in the wintertime. But let's just face it. Bees will die from extremely cold weather. There's a reason that people way up in Canada don't leave their bees out in the open. <laughs> Am I right? They put them in buildings where they can maintain still a cold temperature, but they maintain a temperature that's cold for bees. But it's not unbelievably cold like outdoors. It just makes sense. Now, you can have very healthy bees, you can keep your mite levels down, you can have pretty good sized populations, you can keep feeding them. But when it's all said and done, the bees really are stressed out tremendously by cold weather. You can wrap them, you can use all your different philosophies of wrapping systems, feeding, not feeding, all of that. Treating, not treating, I'm here to tell you that when it's just so darn cold outside and windy for just an extended period of time, it greatly increases the chances that bees are being so stressed out that they perish. And this has been a really cold winter. I read in the news that it says the Pensacola area in Florida broke the state's 130 year old record for, a, for total snowfall. In fact, in this article it says, all 50 states this year have already received accumulating snow. All 50 states, and yes, that includes Hawaii at higher elevation. But it goes on to say the National Weather Service reported at least five inches in Pensacola, Florida, 8.8 .8 inches in Milton, both breaking the previous Florida record of four inches set in 1954. I mean... I know it's warming up this week, and I know we're kind of like, okay, good, we can see how our bees are doing, it is gonna warm up, but I don't get excited where I live in Illinois. When it warms up, like in January or February, there's no way I'm out of the woods, no. <laughs> I mean, at the, just a snap of the fingers, we're back in to below zero temperatures. And we get fooled because sometimes we think, oh good, it's warming up, my bees are gonna be fine. Warm-ups are hard for bees too. I'm just a bearer of bad news today. When it warms up like this, bees are gonna eat more and sure they can move around and get to the food, but they're gonna keep eating more. And here's another thing that you need to realize, and if you're new to beekeeping, you may not know this, but this is a period in near February now, that this is a period when the queen actually starts laying more brood. Well, what do you need when you lay more brood? Number one, you need a lot of bees, nurse bees age, to feed the young larvae. And you need bees to take care and keep all the pupae warm when it gets to the pupal stage. It is incredible the, the challenge, challenges that bees have when they start laying more brood to feed it and to keep it warm in late winter. It's astonishing what bees do. It, it is really quite a miracle that any bees <laughs> survive winter. All right, let me get it back to you now. I know that you have put a lot of energy and time 
and study into your bees. You love them to death, especially those of you that are brand new to beekeeping. 80% of beekeepers, they say, quit beekeeping after the first year. And I think this is what separates um, people that continue to people that quit is winter. I really do. If you come out of winter, your bees are dead, you feel like a failure. And you feel like, well, if I can't keep bees through the winter, I have to keep buying more nukes or more packages. Obviously, I don't know what I'm doing. And so I'm just going to quit and give up altogether. And so we're facing that kind of a challenging climate in beekeeping because we have a lot of people entering in beekeeping that are jumping in, hoping to learn as they go. And I mean, that's what I did. And then you have such losses that it's hard to keep going. <laughs> learn as you go. It's hard to learn as you go if you don't have any bees to play with as you go, right? As you learn. So it takes a lot of money, takes a lot of energy to stay in beekeeping when you keep seeing your bees fail. Is there anything at all that you can do right now as we are knee deep in the winter to help your bees? Okay, let's go back through the things that I said bees die from. They die from low population. Is there anything you can do about that? Yes and no. I mean, your populations, as I said earlier, should have been established back in the fall with bees of winter physiology. However, if you feed your bees now, then you are able to perhaps get them to, to support the brood that the, the queen is producing, right? If they don't have food and the queen's laying eggs, and the eggs become larvae, but the nurse bees are too weak and hungry to feed, produce royal jelly from their hypophrangeal glands. They can't feed the, they might even consume the larvae for protein. So it is important. That's something you can do to bolster up populations now is to feed your bees in midwinter, late winter. But I think whatever you choose to do to feed your bees, please consider feeding your bees right now to help with the population. Now, the second thing that I talked about is, of course, connected with that, and it's food sources. So that's how you get the food built up. The third thing I mentioned was uh, mite control. It is very challenging to control mites in the wintertime. They do reproduce with the reproduction of the brood cycle of the bees as well. So you're getting more mites as you get more bees. That's how the thing works with mites. <laughs> People don't realize. I think some people think mites just fly in the front door. They they reproduce in the cap cells of your bees. And so that's what's really hard to get rid of. It's hard to get rid of them. Now, you can, some people do treat during the wintertime. I personally would never do that. I think my bees are already stressed out enough from wintertime. I don't want to stress them out with some sort of a treatment. But some people say that sometimes your brood is not really so so much brood in the wintertime. Uh, and so that's a good time to treat. But to me, it's too risky to treat in the wintertime. That's going to be a, a call that you'll have to decide if you can make or not. No. So really, we can't treat the way we want to. Um, treatments need a lot of vapors, for example, if you use salic acid or other uh, types of Treatments that require a circulation of the treatment to hit all the bees, to kill all the mites. When they're clustered in a tight ball in the wintertime, those vapors can't penetrate into that tight cluster, so they won't be nearly as effective. So it's almost not worth the effort. So my control comes all season long before we go into winter. Little we can do about mite treatments this time of the year. Obviously, there's nothing we can do about the temperature but there is something we can do to help the temperature not be so um, bad for our bees. And that's kind of one of the things that I'm starting to change my mind on a little bit more too, is because I'm starting to think when it's, and maybe I've said this in the past, but when it's just extremely cold, I mean, dropping way below zero degrees Fahrenheit, um, getting into uh, negative 20 degrees wind chill factor, I think bees are gonna do better if indeed they are wrapped in the from side, top, sides, everywhere. I don't think it's good to keep that on there on warmer days because you want the sun to be able to hit that box. But I think it is good to protect them from cold, cold wind chills. And that's one of the things you can still do. Winter's not over. You can check for food. You can put a wind block, wrap them on those really cold nights. In fact, I sometimes go and get 
shipping blankets, quilted shipping blankets, and I'll throw those on a hive at night and I'll just take it off after the extreme cold snap ends. And I think that's very helpful. So we're not out of the woods yet. There's a lot yet that you need to do. So think about these things. And some of the things that you're worried about, I think there's very little you can do about it. You're not gonna reduce the virus loads in your, in your hive. And that's sometimes why bees do die in the month of February. Let me just give you some encouraging words now. Some of you have been asking me, can you do certain hive manipulations now? Please, I know some of you are brand new to beekeeping and you may not know bee biology uh, uh, as well as you should for these kind of answers. So let me just uh, let you know that you don't want to pull frames up, manipulate frames if the temperature is 60 degrees Fahrenheit or lower because then you're gonna cause damage to developing larvae and pupae, especially the pupae. So you don't, there's very little you can do. You can't buy and replace a queen this time of the year. In, in, in Illinois, or really throughout the whole US, in the month of January and February, queen production is just not there. It's just too cold for queen producers to make queens or anything. So you've just gotta erase that out of your mind. I keep getting questions, people asking me, I didn't have a very good queen in the fall. I want to replace her now. Can I replace my queen now? Well, I mean, you could, but it's not a good time. How do you get her in the cluster? And then where do you find a queen? So you got to realize there's very little you can do to help the hive itself, whether it's queenless or whether the frames need moved around. It's not a good thing to move around frames or think about your queen in the winter time. There's very little to nothing you can do about that part of it. But what we can do is insulate, feed them, provide winter shelter, and then be ready when we come through the winter. If they're still living and we cross our fingers that they are, then we need to be ready to get our mites down instantly. A lot of beekeepers make that mistake. They don't get the mites down as fast as they should once spring hits. You've got to go after mites immediately. There's going to be a lot of them in there. And then secondly, we've got to feed our bees coming out of late winter into, into early spring, feed, feed, feed to help them regain their populations so they can be a healthy colony into spring. Before I give my final word of encouragement, let me tell you guys about a awesome place where a whole bunch of beekeepers have been meeting together. You may not know about this, but hundreds of beekeepers have been coming together every week and learning about bees, asking questions, and enjoying the camaraderie of a beekeeping community. It's right here on my live stream every Thursday night, 7 p.m. Central Time. I'd love for you to join me. We have giveaways. I do a lot of good teachings on beekeeping. And the chat is just incredible. Beekeepers helping beekeepers. And I hope you'll join me. Here's a link for it. The link's also in the description. Let me give you some final comments on how you can get through this winter with your bees. If your bees do die in the winter time, if they do perish, uh, look, it's been very hard on bees. Don't blame yourself. This has been one of the worst winters we've seen, and it's really been a long stretch deep into the South. So don't beat yourself up. You've gained a lot of knowledge. You've gained a lot of experience. I want you to congratulate yourself on what you've done thus far. You've just got to pick the ball up and run with it. And here's how you can do it. Convince yourself that you've got a head start on the next uh, journey into spring. Get a new package of bees, get a new nucleus, whatever you want to do there, but you've already got drawn comb. You've probably got resources in your hive like honey, bee bread, pollen. You've got some of the resources. So that new package, that new nucleus is going to have a head start having that drawn comb and the resources helping them get going really quickly. Don't give up. Stay in the game. You're going to learn each year how to do beekeeping a little bit better. And if you're struggling with understanding honeybee biology, I have just made two videos on bee biology, made simple. I've uh, taught my live stream uh, on bee biology. Take a look right here and you're going to enjoy it. I'll see you guys in the next video.